Hi, my name is Bob Fountain. I am the founder of the Aston Workshop and the Exist Car Show. We have three times the number of exhibitors here at the show this year than we had last year and this is our second year only. One of the notable things about the Great North Car Show is the fact that it's in a gorgeous valley which is a conservation area in, in the Beamish Museum Valley which is a stunning view and makes the site exceptionally beautiful to exhibit your car on. The Aston Workshop was was born of a passion for our old Aston Martins in my garden shed and grew and grew and grew on my little farm and became as international business which it is today. This is my uh, wonderful Aston Martin Rapid S. Uh, it's four door, it's a bit practical for a, a lanky person such as me. I've brought it along here. This is the first time we've been to the uh, Great North Classic Car Show. The show itself is obviously massive, with all, all makes and marks of cars. It's based adjacent to the Aston Workshop, uh, which I happened to cross by accident some time ago. I had a tour of the place, showed me what they were made of, and I was quite blown away. I would recommend anyone who was, who was thinking of, of using the services for sales or servicing and what have you to give it a go. Um, it's, it's a very impressive setup, and I'm not being paid to say that. This business is the Aston Workshop in Beamish County, Durham. I started this business back in the 80s in my garden shed and it grew and it grew and it grew. Well, I'm a great believer of the old saying, do something you love and you'll never work again. And I fell in love with the DB5 when I was in my 20s and the only one I could afford was a wrecked one from a guy in the south of England and it had been in a chicken shed for about 10 years. <laughs> and, uh, it was a funny experience because I was a very much a car enthusiast and I'd restored a number of cars but I'd never restored an Aston Martin and I was in love with the idea of restoring an Aston Martin and I worked on the car in all my spare time. In the process of doing that I also acquired two more Aston Martins. I had a family of Aston Martins in actual fact and one had to be sold to finance the the restoration of the other ones and so it began and then it became my life thing. I don't consider us to be anything else than a bunch of enthusiastic guys working on cars that they all love and every one of these guys' hand picked and came here for the love of what they do and we're like a family and we build beautiful cars for people who love beautiful cars. Hi, yeah, my name's Clive Dickinson and I'm co-author of Portfolio of Dreams. I work at the Aston Martin Workshops, my position is the general manager. The inspiration for the book was um, a timeline poster that we got from Aston Martin and it had a thumbnail picture of a car from uh, pre-war, the very first cars, to the very latest. The timeline and having Tim photograph the cars that come in for sale, we realised that we had most of the models and were sitting on a little gem of photographs that we were able to use and uh, the whole concept started from that. My favourite picture in the book is the DBR1 parked at Silverson in the pits. It just looks timeless. It's beautiful today as it was back in 1958. Being in the pits at Silverson was just its home. The book's like a collector's item, just like any Aston Martin's a collector's item. So I've come to Beamish uh, Classic Car Show today, uh, brought me dad who's found other interesting things to go and look at. I think we've been really lucky today with the weather in that we're not absolutely roasting and also um, we're not absolutely freezing which is good for the northeast I think to achieve a day like that. It's the perfect uh, perfect weather to be wearing a nice, uh, a nice blazer. 
Um, the location itself is absolutely fantastic and for anybody that hasn't been before there's a, there's a hill just to my right over there that's uh, it's covered in lavender um, and the site is split over the two levels and it is the most fantastic smell when you walk up there there really is nothing else like it so if anybody hasn't been before I would say come enjoy it enjoy the beer there's loads to look at and if it keeps getting bigger and bigger it'll be well worth seeing next year if you if you've never been to car shows before and you come to one like this don't just walk around you know don't don't just walk around and look at the cars and take pictures that you'll never look at again talk to people most people who approach you or do you say is this your car if you see a car you're interested in you say is this your car sir and oh they will you will have to shut them up <laughs> you'll, you'll be like yeah i have to go now <laughs> because people when people have poured their heart and soul and a considerable amount of their disposable income or even their non-disposable income into a car they love to tell you the stories about it and the places they've been and the things that they've done and yeah so talk to people hi my name is kevin i've brought along the dma mark 5 jaguar 1950 i've had it for three years now it was exported when it was new to australia because Britain, after the war, had their exports were good and it was took to Australia. It was restored in Australia as well. It went back to England in 1990. The man who had it had a wedding car business and he got it restored. As you can see, the doors are open, suicide doors, for the ladies to come in. And the, the correct way to get in is to put your backside in and then lift your seats in like this so that the gentlemen don't see up your skirt. But if you like Kenny Everett, you generally open your legs a bit. I just did that. But that's the correct way to get in. It's got tan leather. It makes a lovely wedding car for the bride to get in the back. And in its time, it's got a sunroof. On hot days like it is today, you could have the sunroof open. Where the, the man that bought it, he put it, because it was all black when it was restored, and he put this red on. You know, the red. He put the red on. I got in touch with Facebook to the Round the Bend Motor Company in Australia and it was the, the son's father there who had restored it. Um, they didn't have any photographs of when they did it at the time because it was too old, they'd moved premises. But the man who got the car restored for his wedding business was still alive and he used to pop into the, into the showroom and he sent me a couple of photographs when he did the wedding when it was all black. And on this day with the sun shining on the bonnet here down at Beamish, it's absolutely beautiful. The auction, ah, the auction is a culmination of a lot of ideas we've had for a number of years, which dovetail very nicely with the whole car show day, and we feel there's a great future in it here at Beamish because we've got a perfect site for it. My name's Guy Loveridge, I'm the auctioneer here at the uh, Beamish Classic Car Auctions inaugural sale at the Great North Classic Car Show. I'm looking forward to uh, the vibe of a live auction, it's always exciting, I've been an auctioneer for 20 odd years, and to bring a new auction experience to a venue like Aston Workshop here for the Beamish Auctions and the Great North Classic Car Show is a really exciting buzz. So I'm looking forward to the sale of this Morris Minor Traveller. It's an amazing condition car, multiple Concours winner, astonishingly great condition, also a glim champion of champions, wonderful machine and uh, behind me the white Morgan Plus 4 Supersport. Rare beast, only 101 of them ever made. This one, the early cars, the 1961 car, was shipped to Fergus Motors in New York, came back home uh, about uh, 10 years ago and has been meticulously restored. Lawrence Tune Supersport engine, twin Weber carburettors, a really exciting 1960 sports car for the British sports car enthusiast. My name's Steve Berry, um, I've been a motoring journalist for 34 years and I've edited various newsstand magazines, uh, but I'm probably best known for 11 years on BBC Television's Top Gear, when it was an actual motoring programme. There is something special about this car, it's a BMW 2002 TII and somebody today asked me the definition of a classic car. For me a classic has to do a few things, it has to have landmark engineering, something that was different, 
it has to embody its times. Think of a Mini or a, a Willis G or a Model T. Or, in the case of this BMW, it has to drastically revive the fortunes of a car company. Now, people often talk about the BMW 3 Series as the car that made BMW the force they are today, but the truth is, it was this car, it was this series, the O2 Series. I learned to drive in one in the early 80s. My father had one. My dad was a North of England farming man who was a practical man, and we had honest bread and butter transport, Vauxhall Vivas, Ford Escorts. And then one day, he came on with one of these. <laughs> we just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my luck, because it was just when I was learning to drive. These were landmark cars. The first really, the first true European sporting saloon car. Fantastic performance, incredible build quality. I mean, they, it wasn't an expensive car to buy, but if you look at what was around at the same time in the late 70s and early 80s, for the money. I don't think there was anything as good as this BMW. They handle great, they go really well, they look fantastic. And I, after I passed my test in one that was this colour, I bought three of them. And I ran three of them into the ground. I ran them and ran them and drove them like hell until they were beyond, or beyond my ability to repair them. And I was gonna say to my shame, I took them to the scrapyard. They ended up being cubed. But if young men like me hadn't driven them and got some incredible life experiences and memories in those cars and then used them up until they were worn out, these wouldn't be so special. These that are left, and this is an original and unrestored car, wouldn't be so special and wouldn't be nearly so valuable. If we'd all looked after them, people would just go, oh yeah, an O2. But now the number of people that walk along this line, I think it's the only one, I think it's the only O2 here. They walk along this line and they go, men of a certain age like me, men like me go, oh my God, an O2. Whereas someone who's maybe 10 or 15 years younger than me would seize on the M3, the original M3 that's right next to it. So it's kind of how old you are, the car that you learn to drive in will always have a special place in your heart. And uh, for me, that's, the most significant car here, and the O2 series. If anybody says the 3 Series, then no, 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 the O2 was the car that made BMW the force they are today. Hello, my name's Edward Mahoney. This is my second visit here last year. This year I'm with Sunderland Classic Car Club, and there's 30 of us here with cars. This is my car, which I bought for £4.10 shillings. I was a horse driver for the local brewery and just across the back lane from the stables was Jack Angel's scrapyard and it was lying in there and I went to see Jack and asked him what the car was and he says 1938 MG and I asked him if I could buy it. Well, he says it was his nephews who was going to restore it but decided that it was too far gone to restore. So we weighed it on the scales and I paid £4.10 for it. I asked old Jack for a receipt and he was one of these old fellas didn't keep books or anything like that and said, a receipt, son, what the hell's a receipt? I was married a month after I got the car out of Jack's, so it lay my mother's for tenure. I had to decorate the house and things like that before I could start on the car. But eventually when I did start on it, the ash frame was needed repairing, so I repaired my timber frame and I panelled all the body and finished up with the car you see now in front of it. Done a lot of travelling in it since I've rebuilt it. It's not just used at shows like this, we go out in it regular and out at the deals and have lunch somewhere in it. So it's been worth restoring. And it's worth a lot now, more now than four pound ten shillings. Well the first thing was I had a little farm and then I grew a car business which took a few years to grow and at a certain point on the way along that road I decided it would be a really neat thing to have a car festival and we decided to give it a go and that was last year, which was a great success. And now this year, this one's three times as big with lots more people and a car auction and lots of stuff added to it and it's a fantastic turnout. And it's a beautiful sight and I really think we've got something for the future here. A hope and dream for this event in the future would be for it to be the most northerly, most famous car event in the UK. In other words, they're like a mini Goodwood of the North.